Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Educational Commodity Marketing School video series. This video series being sponsored by the Cal Brand Seas to uh, help producers and farmers um, educate them more about grain commodity marketing. This video series today will look closely at the different factors that affect the volatility in grain markets. So let's start off with an example here of corn futures. This is a chart that goes back many, many, many years. And you can see the volatility uh, over those many, many years. Um, a successful marketer would be selling in the top quartile, whereas a poor marketer would be selling in the bottom quartile. So let's teach you how to sell in that top quartile. Uh, one of the factors that can affect the volatility is seasonality. This is a seasonality chart. Uh, for soybeans, and you can see that in any given year, right to be at uh, the end of the year in the fall winter months, uh, prices tend to fall as through the spring summer months, the prices tend to go up. So general rule of thumb is that over the last, and this is over 5, 15, and 30 years, so over many, many years, we tend to do the same thing. Each year is different. Some years are better than others. Uh, these seasonal charts can be found at www.mrci.com for a small subscription fee. In another example, we're using Minneapolis wheat, and Minneapolis wheat tends to usually come down um, just after harvest. Uh, and then it has that uh, post-harvest rally through the fall winter months. It can have another peak to either March or June of the following year. So again, this same general rule of thumb, whether it's 5, 15, or 30 years. Again, each year is different. Some years are better than others. Another factor that can affect volatility or that price can be weather. This is an image of Australia. This past year, Australia had a flood and 38% um, uh, of all the wheat within in, in storage now is feed wheat. So it's caused a lot of concern. Market uh, doesn't have as much quality milling wheat in the system and prices have had to move higher in order to ration some demand. Um, this is another example here of Russia last year where Russia experienced the worst drought in a century and uh, they had to uh, ban all grain exports uh, last August till about July of 2011. Again, prices had to move higher in order to ration that demand. Another example is the winter wheat in the States. Um, we've had uh, very little snow cover. It's very dry in the Midwest, particularly Kansas, where a lot of that wheat is grown. And um, it's the worst start since 2000. And in 2000, bushels dropped by as much as five bushels per acre. So we'll see what the spring brings in 2011. But again, another factor, weather factor, that can impact prices going forward. Another factor is managed money and index funds, also known as speculators. These speculators have continued to just pour into commodities since 2008 highs. According to Barclays research, the number of assets invested in commodities in 2010 grew by 40% to $570 billion. That's a B billion, not M million. Uh, this is just going to continue going forward. In fact, commodities outperformed equities over the last 10 years. Um, your volatility your up and down has actually increased since 2008 by as much as 20% to a total of 50%. In other words, the price of corn today, if it was $6 a bushel, it could move up within a week by 50% to $9 a bushel or be dropped by 50% to $3 a bushel. Within one week, that's the volatility that you're going to be challenged with over the coming years. I don't think it's going to change. It's only going to get worse. Now, when everybody's bullish, when you start to see that uh, everybody's worried about food inflation and commodity prices soaring at the local level, at the local media level, you know what to do. It's time to sell. Take the contrarian view. When everybody else is, is bearish, the sentiment, the bias is, you know, um, worried about the future, you know what to do. Do nothing. Um, the prices typically stop falling and then they start to rise. Another factor is this cycle, the recession, the expansionary uh, cyclical markets. So in times of recession, demand tends to fall. And of course, uh, confidence falls with it and prices tend to fall. In times of expansion, as we're starting to see now here in 2011, where markets are starting to recover, the confidence grows and therefore um, um, prices tend to rise over time. Another 
factor can be international markets. This is a map of Brazil and Argentina. Uh, Brazil and Argentina have become big corn and soybean growers. Brazil is the second, while Argentina is the third largest soybean grower. China is the fourth. U.S. produces 50% of the world's corn production. Argentina comes second, China third, and Brazil fourth. You need to keep an eye on these countries because any production problems with any of these countries, or maybe it's uh, them importing or exporting some more corn or beans or whatever that that uh, issue is can actually impact prices over time. This is a, a map of um China, China's growing population, livestock, middle class, the growing incomes are increased. Demand for grains and proteins uh, consumption continues to increase. Feed demand continues to increase, causing export demand to grow, go up and therefore um, eventually causing those ending stocks to get tight and again prices moving higher. Supply and local demand issues can also impact those prices. This is a uh, chart of corn, U.S. corn production. So you can see that uh, every year is different. You go up and down. Some years are tighter than others. Um, but a lack of acres or yields, like we're moving into 2011, where there seems to be a shortage of acres. Maybe Mother Nature doesn't perform well, and we don't have quite the yields like you know we had in 2010. Uh, that will cause ending stocks to drop. Prices will need to move higher in order to ration that demand. Uh, uh, this is another example of um, you know changes in policy, like the U.S. ethanol mandate, uh, where uh, the U.S. has mandated uh, that we use more ethanol in in gasoline, and we're going from 10 to 15 percent. This creates more demand usage for corn bushels, again causing those ending stocks to get quite tight if the supply is not there. Another example is, is uh, exports on soybeans. In the last three, four years, China's just been buying uh, as much beans as they can because of that increased um, demand for feed livestock. Um, and again, causing ending stocks on beans to get quite tight. USDA can also pose a big problem. In 2008, uh, we got ending stocks down to about 673 million through the month of June, one of those factors that caused the highs in 2008. Today, we're at 745 million. Next week, we might get to uh, below that number. Uh, as we go lower and lower, prices tend to move higher. We need to ration that demand. Uh, this is a, an example of the US dollar. US dollar, as it goes lower, because most grains are priced in U.S. dollars, that foreigner's purchasing power goes up. And I'll show you later what effect that, that U.S. dollar can have on grain prices. It can actually stimulate demand or export demand. Crude oil prices going higher will uh, support et higher ethanol prices, can support higher demand, again, um, uh, using up more corn bushels and driving prices higher. Uh, outside markets like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, as the market gets confident, as investor uh, confidence grows over time, they become more bullish about corporate profits, risk appetites go up, uh, they'll invest more in commodities and drive those prices higher. This is, a, this is that example of showing uh, uh, where um, some will say, well, if I'm bullish soybeans, can I be bullish or bearish corn? Well, no, this simply shows that a rising boat lifts all tides. If you're bullish one, you're uh, bullish another uh, grain commodity. Um, this is an example of that US dollar. As it goes down, you see the grains going up. Another example is that crude oil, where crude oil is going up and you see the relationship with the grains. So in summary, there's a lot of moving parts and farmers um, uh, need to keep their marketing plans flexible and change over time. You gotta keep an eye on all these factors to see if there's any changes there. Um, we can manage the risk and volatility, but we can't predict the future. So I hope today I've showed you some insight into um, how you can become a, a better marketer. In our next video series, we're gonna look more closely at that seasonality and past trends in uh, grain commodity markets. Thanks for joining me today. We look forward to seeing you next time.